What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casual Competitive MTG where it's our goal to give you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that's both fast paced and entertaining. In today's video we decided to proxy up and sleeve some of the new commanders that were spoiled from the Commander 2020 set and we think you'll really enjoy the game that we have today. The gameplay from this background footage today was taken from our stream and we played quite a few games and decided to actually take two of them and make them into videos so our next Tuesday video will also be another gameplay video featuring commanders from the Commander 2020 set with the winner of this game being swapped out for another commander choice in that Tuesday game. That being said, before we get into this gameplay video, we do have a very special announcement. We now have a merch store live at CasuallyCompetitiveMTG.com. In addition to the five clothing designs, the five t-shirts, three hoodies, two tank tops, a backpack, a hat, we also have a Kickstarter going for four playmat designs. We are using Kickstarter because we just don't have the funds to mass print and mass produce four different designs for playmats. So if you're interested in help supporting us and pre-ordering these playmats, head on over to the Kickstarter link in the description and pre-order one. Ordering through Kickstarter does give you a little bit of a discount as well as a option for one of our custom channel design tokens. So if that's something that interests you, please do check out. The support does really help us increase the quality and the quantity of these videos. So if you do want to help support us in that way and rep some really cool and unique looking merch, check out those links in the description. As far as other promotions go, as always, we have a Patreon, a YouTube join button. We have a Discord if you want to join our community and talk to us. And we also have a Twitch channel that we've been streaming twice a week to with live EDH gameplay content. And finally, we have a TCG affiliate link. If you're looking to buy cards, click on that link and then any purchase you make will help out the channel at no cost to you. That all being said, let's get into the opening hands and the deck introductions. Going first today, we have Bill playing the Commander pairing Nakira, Lair Scavenger, and Yannick Scavenging Sentinel. This food chain based combo deck looks to just get a lot of value off of Ad Nauseums, the Mana Dorks, and eventually find his way into food chain, generating infinite creature mana, and then winning through something like a Corpse Knight or a Walking Ballista. Bill's opening hand contained a Flooded Strand, a Godless Shrine, Autumn's Veil, a Noxious Revival, an Enlightened Tutor, a Diabolic Intent, and an Okame Adversary. Going second, we have Nate playing Kalamax the Storm Sire. The goal of this deck is to get just massive value off of playing instant speed draw spells and getting copies of them through Kalamax's ability in order to find his combo, the primary one being a Kiki Jiki line where he just generates infinite hasty tokens and then swings out. A really good card in this deck is Court of Calling because you can convoke Kalamax to tap him in order to copy Court of Calling and then get both of the creatures he needs to win the game. Nate's opening hand contained an island, a Yavamaya coast, a Fintorn elves, a nature's claim, a brainstorm, a counterspell, and a Kiki Jiki mirror breaker. Going third, we have Jordan playing the commander pairing Ukima Stalking Shadow and Kazur Ruthless Stalker. The goal of this Sultai deck is to control the board, all while assembling a food chain based combo, and then generating infinite mana through food chain, and then infinitely casting and exiling Ukima to deal damage to each of his opponents. There is also a Flash Hulk line in this deck, however, due to the fact that we are casually competitive, it is a much slower and not a guaranteed win, and the line is Pili Pala and Grand Architect to generate infinite mana, and then if he has a way to kill Ukima, he's able to continually recast Ukima, but it does involve a few extra steps. It is not just an insta-win Flash Hulk line. Jordan's opening hand contained a Mana Confluence, a Snow-Covered Island, a Mental Misstep, a Swan Song, a Flusterstorm, a Mystical Dispute, and a Protean Hulk. And finally, going last, we have Adam playing Zaxara the Exemplary. The goal of this deck is to utilize the mana ability on Zaxara in combination with something like a Freed from the Real in order to generate infinite mana and then win the game through an X spell like Blue Sun Zenith to draw at his opponents or Finale of Devastation to overrun the board. Adam's opening hand contained an Island, a Soul Ring, a Talisman of Curiosity, an Assassin's Trophy, a Reap, an Isochron Scepter, and a Perplex. Now with the opening hands and deck introductions out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Bill starts off this game by drawing, playing a Godless Shrine as his land for turn, and paying 2 life to have it enter untapped. He then ships the turn over to Nate. Nate draws, plays a Yavamaya Coast as his land for turn, and then taps it for 1 green taking 1 damage to cast a Land of War Elves. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws, plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and then taps it, paying one life for a blue mana to cast a Mystic Remora. In response, Bill taps his land to cast an Enlightened Tutor. 
In response to the enlightened tutor, Jordan pays two life to cast a mental misstep, countering the enlightened tutor. The mystic Remora then resolves, and Jordan ships the turn over to Adam. Adam draws, plays a command tower as his land for turn, not wanting to feed the fish, decides to give the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, plays a flooded strand as his land for turn, and immediately pays one life to crack it to search up a temple garden to the battlefield, and pays two life to have it enter untapped. He then taps two mana to cast an Okame Adversary, since it's reduced by two due to Nate's land war elves. With nothing left, Bill gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, plays an island as his land for turn, and then taps for one mana to cast a Findhorn Elves. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and in his upkeep pays one mana to keep the Remora around for at least one more turn cycle. He then plays a snow-covered island and ships the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, plays an island as his land for turn, and really not wanting to feed the fish, decides to take another turn off and give the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, plays a snow-covered plains as his land for turn, and then goes to combat, swinging his Okame adversary at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers, takes two damage, and Bill then draws a card due to Okame dealing damage to an opponent. In his second main phase, Bill taps for one green mana to cast an Elvish Mystic. He then taps for two mana to cast a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Elvish Mystic as an additional cost. He does not pay 4 extra, Jordan draws a card off of Mystic Remora, and then in response to the Diabolic Intent, Nate taps for 2 mana to cast a counter spell, stopping the tutor before it happens. He also does not pay for Remora, Jordan draws, and then Diabolic Intent is countered, and Bill gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and with really nothing to do, has to just give the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, and in his upkeep decides to pay 2 mana to keep Remora around, for a third turn. He then draws, plays a Scalding Tarn as his land for turn, and then gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and decides his time has come, taps for one mana to cast a Soul Ring, not paying for Remora. He then taps the Soul Ring to cast a Talisman of Curiosity, again not paying for Mystic Remora. With nothing left, Adam decides to give the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and then immediately goes to combat, swinging his Okame adversary at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers, takes two damage, and Bill then draws a card. In his second main phase, he plays a Verdant Catacombs as his land for turn, immediately paying one life to crack it to search up a forest to the battlefield. He then taps his mana to cast a Corpse Knight. It resolves, and with nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate. On Bill's end step, Nate taps for one blue mana to cast a Brainstorm. Brainstorm resolves, Nate draws three, and puts two cards back on top of his library. Nate then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and then taps his Findhorn Elves to cast a Wild Growth, enchanting one of his lands. He then, with no land drop still, has to give the turn to Jordan. On Nate's end step, Jordan pays one life to crack his Scalding Tarn to search up another island to the battlefield. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, finally lets the fish go where it rightly belongs, into the graveyard. He then draws, plays a breeding pool as his land for turn, and pays two life to have it enter untapped. With nothing else, he goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Jordan's end step, Adam taps for one blue mana to cast a Brainstorm. He draws three cards, puts two back on top, and Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and taps his mana to cast his commander, Saxara the Exemplary. In response to the Zexara, Jordan taps for one blue mana to cast a Mystical Dispute, attempting to counter the commander. Adam is not able to pay for Mystical Dispute and his commander is countered. With nothing left to do, he goes to give the turn to Bill, and on Adam's end step, Bill pays one green mana to cast a Noxious Revival, targeting his Diabolic Intent. In response to the Noxious Revival, Adam pays 2 life to cast a Mental Misstep in an attempt to stop Bill from getting his tutor back. In response to the counter, Bill taps for 1 green mana to cast a Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer resolves, he draws a card, and then his Noxious Revival is uncounterable, so it resolves and Bill puts Diabolic Intent back on top of his library. Bill then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and then goes to combat and swings his Okame adversary at Adam, who declares no blockers, takes two damage, and Bill then draws a card. 
In his second main phase, Bill taps his mana to cast a Destiny Spinner. When that resolves, Bill taps for two mana to cast a Diabolic Intent on cast, sacrificing his Corpse Knight as an additional cost. In response to the Diabolic Intent, May taps for 3 mana to cast a Fierce Guardianship attempting to counter the Diabolic Intent. Nobody has any responses, the Diabolic Intent is countered, and Bill then goes to pass the turn to Nate. On Bill's end step, Jordan taps for 1 green mana to cast a Worldly Tutor. The Tutor resolves, and Jordan searches up a Spell Seeker to the top of his library. Nate then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and taps his mana to cast a Ristic Study. In response to the Ristic Study, Jordan taps for one blue mana to cast a Swan Song, countering the spell. With nothing left, Nate gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and then taps his mana to cast a Spell Seeker. It resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, he searches up a Flash to his hand. With nothing left, Jordan passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, taps his mana to cast an Elves of the Deep Shadows. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Demonic Tutor. His tutor resolves and he searches up a card to his hand. He then plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn, and then passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and then goes to combat, again swinging his OK adversary at Adam. Adam declares no blockers, and Bill draws a card. In his second main phase, Bill taps for one green mana to cast an Arbor Elf. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and then taps for two mana to cast a Regrowth targeting his counter spell. In response to the Regrowth, Bill taps for two mana to cast an Eladomri's Call. In an attempt to stop Bill's tutoring and priorities get to him, Adam taps for one blue mana to cast a Flusterstorm targeting the Eladomri's Call. The Flusterstorm resolves, and Eladomri's Call is countered, and Regrowth then returns Counterspell to Nate's hand. With nothing left, Nate gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, plays a Swamp as his land for turn, and then passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and then taps for one blue mana to cast a Ponder. He rearranges the top three cards of his library and then draws a card. He then taps his mana to recast his commander, Zaxara. This time, it resolves, and with his commander on the battlefield, Adam gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and then again immediately goes to combat, swinging his Okame adversary at Adam. Adam decides to not sacrifice his commander, takes two damage, and Bill then draws a card. In his second main phase, Bill taps for three mana to cast a Fey Burrow Elder. With nothing left, Bill gives the turn to Nate. He untaps, draws, and then for zero mana, casts a Mana Crypt. However, with nothing else to do and really missing these land drops, he goes to pass the turn to Jordan. On Nate's end step, Jordan taps for two mana to cast a Flash. In response to Flash, Nate taps for two mana to cast Counterspell, successfully countering Flash. With nothing left, Jordan then proceeds to his turn, untaps, draws, and then with nothing to do, immediately passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and really liking the play that Jordan just made, decides to also immediately pass the turn. Bill on his turn untaps, draws, and then goes to combat, swinging his Okame adversary at Nate this time. Nate declares no blockers, takes two damage, and Bill then draws a card. In his second main phase, Bill taps for one green mana to cast a Boreal Druid. He then taps for another green mana to cast a Land of War Elves. With nothing left, Bill gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and, in his upkeep, wins his Mana Crypt trigger, not taking damage. He then draws and plays a Command Tower as his land for turn. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Dockside Extortionist. When it enters the battlefield, he gets 3 treasure tokens. Nate then taps some of his mana to cast his commander, Calamax the Stormsire. In response to the cast, Jordan taps for 5 mana to cast an Ad Nauseam. The Ad Nauseam resolves, and he then starts revealing cards losing life due to the CMC. He goes 12 cards deep and goes down to 12 life, and decides to stomp there. The Calamax then resolves, and Nate then goes to combat and swings his 2-2 bird at Jordan. Jordan takes the damage, and then with nothing left, Nate goes to pass the turn to Jordan. 
On Nate's end step, Jordan pays two more life to cast a Noxious Revival, targeting his Flash. In response to the Noxious Revival, Adam taps his mana to cast Perplex, targeting the Revival. In response to Perplex, Jordan for zero mana casts Pact of Negation. The Pact resolves, and Jordan puts Flash back on the top of his library. With nothing left, Jordan goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, pays 5 mana in order to not lose the game off the pack trigger. He then draws, and in his first main phase, plays a Forbidden Orchard as his land for turn. He then goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Jordan's end step, Bill taps for 2 mana to cast a Tainted Pact. The Tainted Pact resolves, and Bill starts revealing cards, exiling them until he finds one he likes. He decides to go through most of his deck and stop on Food Chain. He puts Food Chain to his hand and exiles the rest of the cards. Then, in Jordan's end step, Jordan discards down to 7 and then passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and taps his Talisman, taking 1 damage to produce a green to play a Birds of Paradise. With nothing left, however, Adam has to pass the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and then taps his mana to cast one of his partner commanders, Nikara Lair Scavenger. He then goes to combat and swings his mana dork and his okay at Jordan for 5 total damage. Jordan declares no blockers, takes the damage, and in his second main phase, Bill taps his mana to cast Food Chain, which is uncounterable due to Destiny Spinner. It resolves, and he then exiles Okame Adversary to his Food Chain for 5 green creature mana. He then exiles his Boreal Druid for 2 white creature mana, and uses some of this mana to cast his other commander, Yannick Scavenging Sentinel. In response to this cast, Nate taps for 1 green mana to cast a Nature's Claim targeting the food chain. In response to the Nature's Claim, Bill exiles his other dorks to flow additional creature mana. The Nature's Claim then resolves, destroying food chain, and Bill then gains 4 life and his commander then enters the battlefield and he decides to exile Fabro Elder, putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Yannick. He then uses some of this floating creature mana to cast an Eternal Witness. When it enters the battlefield, he returns Food Chain to his hand. However, with not enough non-creature mana left available, Bill does have to pass the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and in his upkeep wins his Mana Crypt trigger, not taking damage. He then taps his mana to cast Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Kiki Jiki resolves, and Nate then taps his mana and caps his commander to help convoke out a Chord of Calling. Since his commander is tapped and this is the first instant he has cast, he gets two copies of Chord of Calling, X equaling three. When he copies the spell, his commander also gets a plus one plus one counter. In response to the Chord of Calling, Jordan taps for one blue mana to cast a Flusterstorm, giving Adam a spirit when Forbidden Orchard is tapped for mana. He puts two of the copies on the original cord and one copy on the copied cord. In response to the Flusterstorm copies, Nate taps his Kikijiki to create a copy of Dockside Extortionist. When the copy enters, Nate gets three more treasure tokens. He then cracks one of these treasure tokens for a red mana to pay for the Flusterstorm copy on his copied Chord of Calling. The original Chord is countered, but off of the copied Chord of Calling, Nate searches up a Hyrax Tower Scout to the battlefield. When it enters the battlefield, he targets Kikijiki with the untap ability. In response to this untap ability, Adam taps for two mana to cast an Assassin's Trophy targeting Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. In response to this Assassin's Trophy, Nate taps for one blue mana to cast a Chain of Vapor targeting his own Kiki Jiki. It resolves, he bounces Kiki Jiki to his hand, and he then sacrifices a land to copy Chain of Vapor to bounce Dockside Extortionist to his hand. When this spell is copied, he gets another plus one plus one counter on Kalamax. The Dockside is then bounced to his hand, the stack is then clear, and Nate goes to pass the turn to Jordan. On Nate's end step, Adam taps for 2 mana to cast a Reap. Since there's only one black permanent, he can only target one thing, and he decides to return his Demonic Tutor to his hand. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, plays a Reflecting Pool as his land for turn, and then gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and taps for 1 blue mana to cast a Mystic Remora. 
He then taps for two mana to cast an Isochron Scepter. In response to the Isochron, Jordan taps for two mana to cast a Snap, targeting Zaxara. He does not pay for Mystic Remora, Adam draws, and then the Snap resolves, Zaxara is bounced to Adam's hand, and then Isochron Scepter resolves, and at this point, Adam decides to not imprint anything. He then taps his mana to recast his commander from his hand. With nothing left, Adam passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws, and then taps his mana to cast a food chain, which again is uncounterable due to the destiny spinner. He doesn't pay for Mr. Grimora, Adam draws, and then in response to the food chain, Jordan pays 7 mana to overload a cyclonic rift. He is not able to pay for Mr. Grimora, so Adam draws again. In response to the cyclonic rift, Bill taps for one black mana to cast a Vampiric Tutor, not paying for Mystic or Mora, and he then searches a card to the top of his library and loses two life. The Cyclonic Rift then resolves, and since a creature with a counter on it left the battlefield, Bill loses a life and draws a card due to his commander's ability. When Yannick leaves the battlefield, Fabro Elder also re-enters the battlefield, and then Food Chain resolves. Bill exiles the Fabro Elder to generate 4 green mana to cast the card he tutored for, Eternal Scourge. He then exiles Eternal Scourge with Food Chain to generate 4 green mana, and then recasts it for 3 out of his exile, and then repeats this process to generate infinite creature mana of whatever colors he wants. He then uses some of this green creature mana to recast all of the creatures that just got bounced to his hand, including his Eternal Witness. And when it enters the battlefield, he returns Corpse Knight to his hand. He then casts this Corpse Knight with some of his infinite mana, and he then proceeds to continue the Eternal Scourge loop to continually recast and exile it, dealing one damage to his opponents each time Eternal Scourge enters the battlefield. His opponents are very soon drained of life, and Bill then wins the game. This game overall I found really exciting. As someone who was just sitting in the Discord call watching the game, it was really cool to see what Bill could do to kind of get around what the blue players were trying to stop him with. The deck that he built is fairly resilient and it just goes to show that you don't always need blue to play at these relatively higher powered tables. Now instead of a post game discussion, I wanted to just talk about these commanders and really give my opinion after seeing them in action. I think Zexara is kind of a cutesy commander, and it's nice having a combo piece in the command zone, but the fact that you have the generator in the command zone and you still need an outlet makes it a little bit more difficult. Having black tutors does help putting that together, but with the bad half of the combo in the command zone, it does make it harder to get this online. Yes, it can be a value piece, but it's relatively easy to stop, and a 4 cost mana dork is not always reliable. I think this commander will be strong, but I think there are some definite downsides. Ukima as a commander, on the other hand, I think really does shine. The fact that Jordan was always threatening a win just goes to show you that Sultai is a really strong color pairing, and the fact that his outlet is in the command zone does just make the deck a little stronger because now you just have to find the generators, of which there's a few, and you always have access to that win con right there. This deck can also be built to be even stronger with demonic consultations and a better Flash Hulk line, so I think the fact that this deck wasn't running those and still threatened to win frequently just shows you that this commander is going to be fairly strong. The next one I want to talk about is Kalamax, and although this commander did threaten a win somewhat early on, I think that it's somewhat unreliable to, to count on the copy spell attribute of Kalamax, and because of that, it really hinders the deck building process. I think to utilize Kalamax to its full ability, you are going to have to play a lot of things that do well when copied, However, it's not always reliable to have Kalamax on the battlefield, so you do lose a lot of value there, and I think the deck will suffer just because of it. I think if you wanted to build a deck that relies on Kiki Jiki lines, there are better commanders, but I do think the, the Kalamax ability is strong and can be made to be at this higher powered level, but I think it has some pretty big downsides and is a step below the tier that Ukima kind of sits at in terms of ranking these commanders. And finally, let's talk about the winning deck, the commander pairing Nakira, Lair Scavenger, and Yannick Scavenging Sentinel. 
Sentinel. Similar to Kalamax and Saxara, I think this will be another fringe deck, mainly because there are just better colors and better commanders to run this type of archetype in. The fact that the card draw engine on your commander is super conditional and it does take more steps to get in place does make it just a little bit worse than maybe like a Timna and an Iker Shadiki combination. So while I think this will be strong and it's in good colors for food chain and it did win this game and shows you that it can be resilient and built to be fairly strong, I do think it's going to sit a step below where the other farm lists are and the other turbo Nas lists are. It will be fun to play and it will be fairly strong, but there may be better options if you are trying to be super optimal with this Turbo Nas type strategy. Anyway, that may have sounded a little critical, but I just wanted to give you my opinions on these commanders from a spectator's point of view, so I hope you enjoyed that little section. That being said, that is all we have for this video. If you made it to this point, I just want to say again, thank you so much for enjoying the content. And if you do want to help support us, head on over to cashacompetitivemtg.com to check out our merch and our playmats as well. Our next video will be another gameplay video featuring the commander pairing Shabraz the Sky Shark and Braylon Sky Shark Rider. So I hope you're excited for that. But that being said, that is all we have for this video. We hope you did enjoy it. Again, my name is Joseph. This is Cash a Competitive MTG. And we will see you next time.